Hey there, I'm Eitan and welcome to Wix Fixer. This is a series about the Wix data API. And today we're going to be talking or at least start talking about what is really the heart of this data API, which is the Wix data query. The Wix data query lets you query a collection. If you don't know what the word query means, it basically means ask the collection for certain data based on criteria that you will define in advance. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so for this uh, Wix data query demonstration, uh, we have over here the repeater that we have been using in the previous demonstrations, which is linked to our example collection. And in order to start get started with the query, we need to go over to the reference and go right over here to Wix data. So I'm here in Wix data, and this is query. And I'll be linking to all this below. And you can see right over here the instructions for how to build a basic query. So I'm going to go over and I'm going to just copy this starter code right over here. And I'm going to head back to our Wix Fixer website and zoom in just a tad so that you can see what's going on here. Okay, great. So we have here our collection selected already in my collection, which we did in previous videos. And this is basically just the ID of the collection. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to paste the starter code that we copied over. Uh, and we don't need this import because as you see, I already have it here on top from our previous demonstrations. And let's take a look at how the query is built. So we have Wix data and then dot query. And then here we put in the uh, name or idea of the collection that we're going to be querying, which in our case is my collection, the variable and not uh, my collection the string, which is actually equal to collection example. And then we call dot find, and then dot then will give us a promise which returns the results. And the results of the query are basically the items that came back from the query. Okay, and then with after we get back the results, we can choose what we want to do with them. Uh, and I'm actually going to get rid of this whole if here, because I don't want to confuse you at this point. Um, and we don't need that either. And you can see here that after that, we have something called catch, which will basically catch any errors that we might have. Before I continue, I just want to say that this can also be done using async await. So instead of writing Wix data that query my collection dot find dot then, I can actually write it out like this inside of an async function. So let's say I'll say const I query, and this equals to a function, which will need to be async, of course. And inside this async function, I can say let results equal await Wix data dot query my collection, and then don't forget to call the dot find method. Okay, and this will basically do the same exact thing. So this results will be equal to these results. Uh, I am going to be showing all the demonstrations using the dot then catch uh, way of doing things just because that's how it is in the Wix documentation, which you might be following along with. Uh, and I don't want to overcomplicate things. But since this is what I often use when I'm writing my own code, it is important for me to demonstrate this as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and erase that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to actually console here the results. Results. And then we're going to take a look at what this result looks like in our console. So I'm going to go ahead and click preview right over here. And you can see here that this is what came back from our query, okay, because our query was not inside any kind of function, it just ran as soon as the page loaded. So we see here that we have lots of stuff coming back inside the result. And I'm going to go ahead and move this over. 
just so that we can see a little better. And the first thing that we have is items, okay? And that is what you're usually going to be using uh, when you're using a Wix query, because this is actually what you were querying for. And these are items from the uh, collection that I specified. So that would be the example collection. And each one of these items is an object with all of the uh, information from those items. So we have your first name, we have Shanghai. This is because I created Bob, so I didn't give him all of the details that everyone has. But if we take one lower down, you'll see here we have a full object with all of the info inside of our collection, uh, including the image. And each one of these corresponds to one of the fields like we saw in some of the previous examples. So first thing I want to show you is that here you see that we only have 50 items. Okay, 50. Uh, here it says 49 because it starts at zero. Uh, this is an array. And if you want more than 50 items, then you'll have to use the uh, limit method. Uh, and I'll sh be showing that in uh, one of the next videos on queries. Uh, but this, in this example, we're just going to be touching on some basic things. Um, we have total count. Um, inside here, we have more information. To be honest, I have never used anything pretty much except for the items that come back. Uh, if this interests you, you can probably take a look at the documentation and get more information about what each of these is. So as I said, these items is really what we're going to be dealing with. And the way that we tap into those items is just by breaking down the results um, object that came back. So for example, if I want the only the items, I can query for result.items. And then if we preview now, then you'll see that we got back an array and here are only the items. Okay, and then if we want a specific item, for example, the first item that came back, then we can use items, for example, zero, that will be the first item second item, third item. And that's how you um, kind of select something specific within an array. Uh, if you're not familiar with JavaScript, you could just take my word for it. And that is how you would select a specific item. So what you saw in the example that Wix uh, provided, they had an if statement here. Um, for example, if uh, results at items do um, at length, let's say, okay, is bigger than zero, then do something, okay? And this basically means that if we got items back from our query, do something. Uh, and this is useful so that you don't break your uh, code because if you try to do something with the items that came back, but you actually didn't get any items back, then you will run into errors. So this is a good safeguard to usually have uh, just to make sure that you're only running code when you actually have items, because sometimes a query can come back empty. So that is how to set up a very basic query, which is just getting the data from the collection without any kind of parameter. Uh, now let's dive in a little further and talk about these uh, parameter methods that we can use and how to specify what we want to get back from our collection. So we saw, for example, that If I just uh, hop into preview one more time, consoling the items that came back, so results.items. So if I hop into preview mode, then we'll see that we have uh, an item, for example, let's go to item four. So where first name is Tomlin, okay? So I'm just gonna copy Tomlin and I'm gonna head back to the editor. And now I'm going to make a query that will select only people whose first name is Tomlin. And this is similar to the get method that we talked about in the first video of this series. But the real advantage here is that I don't need to use the ID to get the item. I can use any one of the fields to get the item. And the way we're going to do that is using the equals uh, method. And if I go over here to Wix data query, 
And here's a list of all the things that we can do with the query. And we're going to be talking about this right now. OK, so dot equals. Uh, EQ is equals. Uh, and in order to run this, basically what we have to do is just add this dot equals right after the query, and then pass in the field name and the string that we want to filter by uh, or the parameter that we're looking for. So in our example right over here, what I would need to do is right before the find, okay, so remember all these things need to come before the find. And then I write dot equals, and here I'm going to put the field name, which was first name. And then I'm going to put the, um, the string that I am defining this query by, which is Tomlin. Okay. And regarding if this is case sensitive or not, I'm actually don't remember. So you'd have to take a look at the, okay. So right here, matching strings with equal is case sensitive. Okay. So this would not work if I had just wrote Tomlin like that. It has to be capital as it is in the data set. And there are other queries that are not case sensitive. Uh, so you can solve problems using those. Uh, okay, so let's preview our code and see uh, what comes back from this. So right here in the console, we can see that we only got one item back. And that is because I guess that is the only person in the collection or the only item in the collection with a first name of Tomlin. And this would be really useful if we need to select specifically Tomlin or all the Tomlins in our data set. Uh, so let's say this is a little too specific for us, and we would want to find Tomlin even if somebody only wrote Tom, let's say. So I'm going to head back to the editor. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to wrap my query inside of a function. So what we're going to be doing now is building a basic search within our uh, collection. And here you have kind of a search uh, bar and a search button. And I'm just going to create a wrapper function. So this is going to call this function search. And oops, jumping around. And inside the search function, what we're going to do is we are going to run our query. We're going to run our full query. Uh, so I'm going to just put that right in there. And let's format. And the other thing we're going to do is we are going to be using the value of whatever we put here inside of search input. So I'm just going to say um, query, or actually, I need to declare that first. Sorry, let query equal search input w here, search input dot value. And then instead of passing Tomlin over here, okay, I'm going to pass query. But I'm also not going to be using this equals method because I want to use another method, which is contains. Okay, and contains basically mean means that um, we're checking a field to see if it has the string that we provide also in part. So it doesn't have to be exactly equal. So matching with contains is not case sensitive. Okay, so text, lowercase, does contain, for example, text, uppercase, and vice versa. Okay, so let's go over, and I'm going to switch my equals query out for contains. And then instead of passing in Tomlin over here, what I'm going to do is pass in query. Okay, so then we're going to run this search function whenever we click on the search button. So I'm just going to add that as an event listener. So I'm going to go here and uppercase. I just seem to look uppercase because everything is so big. Search, what I call this? Search button. Some reason the autocomplete wasn't working. Search button dot on click, and then here we're going to run search. Okay, and let's check it out. So I'm going to go over here to preview, and 
And then let's search for a search term. So I'm just going to write in here, Tom. Okay, and then let's run our search. So I'm going to click search. And here we have the console. And we see here now that we have two items. So one is Tomlin, okay, as expected, because it has Tom. And the other one is Tommy. Okay, so we got back two. Let's try something else. Let's try just like um, SA and I'm gonna search. And let's go let's close this array up. And here we got back the query. And you can see all of these have SA in them. So here we have Sally Ann, and here we have Sashenka, okay? And here we have Teresa, okay? So this is what I was looking for, an example where SA, sorry, is at the end of the word. So let's say I only wanted to search for people who are, their name starts with the uh, search term that I provided, which makes kind of sense because when you're writing out somebody's name or something you're looking for, sometimes you start from the beginning. Uh, so I'm going to go back to the editor. And for that, we will use another method, which is starts with, which is right over here on the bottom. Okay, and this basically is the same thing we've been doing, but it only will match if it starts with um, those characters or that string that I put in the search term, and it is not case sensitive. So let's go over here, and I'm just going to switch this contains out for starts. Okay, and then I am going to preview. And let's search again for SA, and I'm just going to run the search. And you can see that we got back only 12, where last time we got back 26 or more. And all of these are only the items where the first name actually starts with SA. OK. Uh, and the last step of this demonstration, just to make it a little more complete, is that we can populate our repeater with the data that comes back from our query. So after we console, let's say, I think I called this people repeater dot data equals results at items. Okay, so this is a good example where we'd want to put it in an if statement if I wasn't lazy. Uh, because, for example, if I don't get back any results, maybe I don't want to change the repeater and just leave it as it is. Uh, because otherwise, I would have a blank repeater or maybe have an error. And I would only want to populate the repeater with data once I get back actual items. So let's preview this and see what it looks like. Okay, so I'm going to actually zoom out a little bit just so we can see this a little better. And let's use the search term SA again, and I click search. And you can see now that my repeater only has those people whose first name starts with SA. And if I switch to Tom like we had before, then you'll see that here we only have the two Toms. Okay, so with this short video, you learned about Wix query uh, inside of the Wix data API. And you also learned how to make something super practical, which is a search bar for your repeaters that are connected to Wix data. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. In the future videos, we'll be diving a little deeper into Wix query uh, and learning a little bit more about it. Uh, if you like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.